few years back, I came across a video of Japanese people discussing about having a small face or they call it kugao. Um, it's actually a thing in Japan um, because they associate it um, with attractiveness. And the AI suggested me another video of um, Korean and Chinese uh, discussing how saying that a person has a small face or head is actually a compliment in Korea. But to the Chinese, it is actually an insult because saying that you have a small head in China means you are dumb. Now, why do I tell you this? Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Nur Aisha Kirabinti Hamdan, metric number 1628912, and the objective of our group's presentation is to explain the issues in the discourse of culture, which is a blueprint that guides people's behavior in a community. There will be few parts to the presentation. My group mate, Arisa and I, will be presenting on the first part of the assignment, while Nora Shikin and Nick Nora Fifa will be explaining on the second part of the assignment. Lastly, we will brief you guys on the progress for our second assignment. Assalamualaikum to our beloved lecturer, Dr. Adlina and my fellow classmates. My name is Nur Ain Arisa binti Muhammad Azam. I will be presenting on the topic of the tipping culture between Japan and the United States of America, which is based on the Sustainable Development Goal or SDG 8 which means decent work and economic growth. First of all, the United States of America, US and Japan portray the different attitudes in accepting dipping culture. These two cultures are having the same form but different meaning from the perspective of American the meaning of tipping culture is a norm and can be considered rude if someone does not give tips in any services many of the restaurants in America automatically added the tips in the bills or ask the tips directly Another reason tipping culture is being practiced is because people want to experience services at its best in America. This is because they believe that if they give extra money to the workers and the workers will enhance the best quality of the services. Plus tipping also symbolizes gratuity to the workers. Uh, this is because by giving tips, it will help the workers to sustain in America. Moving on to the perspective of the Japanese. The tipping culture could be considered insulting in certain situations. It will create a lot of problems, a lot of misunderstandings if someone is strongly practicing the tipping culture in Japan. Japanese believe that they do not need tips because of their excellency of services and quality of services are guaranteed in Japan. If the workers um, do not meet this kind of ethic, their employer will get a new replacement for the job. And for linguistic evidence of tipping culture in US, as cited by Lynn in Foster's, the word tip itself in many different languages translates to drink or money or it is equivalent. This linguistic evidence proposes an idea of tipping is based on the act of gratitude from customers towards service workers. However, differently in Japan, their kind of tipping is called kokoruzuki. Kokoruzuki is um, giving money before services and it also applies to events um, such as marriage and funerals uh, and also will be given in the envelope. This shows that Japanese practice their tipping differently and 
uh, rarely in any occasions. To conclude, tipping culture between the US and Japan uh, are different in terms of semantics and its application. The next comparison, which is the comparison of early education between Malaysia and the United Kingdom based on SDG 4 quality of education. These two cultures have the same meaning but different forms. Malaysia and UK share the same meaning of early education which is early educational programs for children. However, Malaysia is used different forms is using different forms compared to the UK. In Malaysia, the, um, the early education system is supervised and governed by two ministries which are the Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development and also the Ministry of Education. The Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development is supervising the enrollment system of children care and early education for the children that age below four, age below four years old. Um, while the while the Ministry of Education is supervising the education of the children age above five years old. Um, UNICEF is one of the interna international organizations which funds the educational programs and welfare to the children. There are no special schemes or initiatives from the government that will provide parents with free early education to preschool learners. Differently in the UK, education system is governed by the only one governing body which is the UK government. It means no other subsidiary ministry that, super that supervises early education. UK government funds early education from the age of 3 years old. The government, um, the government has introduced different programs to early education and one of them is called Universal Entitlement. This program is suitable for children the age of 3 and 4 years old. Moreover, when the children reach 5 years old, they need to start their full-time education in primary school and are no longer subjected to early years foundation stage policy. Another important form of early education is curriculum. In Malaysia, no public policy or standardized curriculum amended for children below 4 years old. National preschool curriculum was introduced um, and constituted for preschool institutions which affect children aged 4 years old and above. Through the program, um, the parents have the encouragement and to send their children to preschool to prepare uh, their children from entering primary school. Um, otherwise, in UK, Statutory, statutory framework was introduced by the Department of UK's government to standardize the um, co curriculum system for children to enhance their social skills in the first five years. Some might ask, when it involves two different culture, um, would it be easy to assimilate if the culture seems to have similar elements of a pattern behavior? And the answer is actually no, because study shows that a pattern behavior in two different cultures might have similar meaning and form, um, however they may differ in their distribution. 
I am Nurain Shakira binti Hamdan, uh, metric number 1628912. And to provide a better understanding of pattern behavior with same meaning, same form, but different distribution, I will be explaining on honorifics between Korean and Japanese culture based on SDG 16, which is peace, justice, and strong institutions. First, for the meaning of honorifics um, in Korean culture, um, it is called and it is actually a tool to distinguish um, social identities and the relationships uh, between the users. And this pattern behavior, honorifics, also has secondary meaning in Korea, um, which refers to separation or distance. And if they do not use jondema uh, um, in their conversation, um, it means connection um, and closeness. Meanwhile, um, Japanese honorifics um, is called keigo. Uh, literally, it means uh, deference. Um, the first character, K, uh, means to respect or to honor. And the second character, Go, means language or speech. And K, Go also has other secondary meanings, which include respect or sonchu, uh, distance, hedate, and formality, aratamari. So, from this explanation, we can conclude that... Um, both Japanese and Korean honorifics, Chondema and Keiko, um, which is used as a politeness marker and also as a social diaxis, both actually share the same primary meaning, that is, to show politeness and respect. Second, Korean and Japanese honorifics also have similar forms, and generally the form can be categorized into two, referent honorifics and hearer or addressee honorifics. And this form is reflected by inflections in the word. For the former language, uh, it is marked by desu, masu in Japanese, and imida or yo in Korean. For instance, when saying I love you, the informal way would be sarange, but the formal way would be sarangyo or sarangamida. And in Japanese, before you eat, you would say itadakimasu. And after you have eaten to show that you have enjoyed the food, you would say Kochi so samadesu. Also, similar factors such as social status and age differences influence both cultures' usage of honorifics. And since we want to analyze the different distribution of the pattern behavior, I'll be focusing on the age differences. This brings me to the third point, which is yearly distribution of honorifics based on one's age. Each differences in Korea um, reflect the hierarchy between the speaker and the addressee. So, uh, the speaker will use formal speech with someone older and will use bamma or informal speech with their friends or junior. And to compare this to the Japanese, each differences does not indicate hierarchy uh, because the Japanese, they prefer to make hierarchical relationship less apparent between speakers and addressee. Um, so they will use non-marked utterances instead of using formal or informal utterances. Luna, how old are you? Seven. Yes, I'm also seven. I'm also seven. I'm also seven. In this era, it's very difficult. From this clip, we can see that the Koreans usually ask about age when they know a new person and we believe that um, this might be due to the association of age with hierarchical status. Um, for us, this might sound um, as rude, right? Uh, asking about one's age. But for the Koreans, um, this is not considered as rude and it is something that should be sorted out as early as possible uh, because that will influence their choices. Um, of using either Bamman or Jandeman later. Koreans also have different system when it comes to the way they calculate age. Um, they have Korean age and they also have uh, international age. Um, this is because uh, in Korea, the Korean age um, is calculated based on lunar calendar where uh, as soon as um, a baby is born, their age will be one year old. Uh, because Korean culture actually counted the nine months duration of a baby in the mother's womb 
as one year. And from the clip, there is another system to calculate age, uh, which is based on the year they enter school or college. Um, because school term in Korea starts around uh, mid-March and Lunar New Year is usually celebrated in February or January. So those who are born early, like in January 1975, they will enter uh, the school uh, year together with those of previous year. So they basically have a different circle of friends. So they use um, formal language with each other. So this yearly distribution is actually the source of misinformation in the usage of honorifics between Japanese and Koreans because there's no such system uh, in Japan uh, as Japanese calculated their age using Gregorian calendar. So despite being born in the same year, they might have um, one or two year age differences due to Korean age system. Therefore, to understand this, we will look into the linguistic evidence. Pyongo or John um, is heavily influenced by power because Korean culture, they have a very strong sentiment of hierarchical status. Uh, this is due to the word um, we as Aram and are as Aram. We as Aram is the person above, the superior, and are as Aram is the person below or the subordinate. Um, these two words um, are always associated with John uh, That's why its differences is really important uh, in this pattern of behavior. As opposed to the Japanese, Keigo is always associated with the words Uchi in group and Soto out group. So their usage of honorifics depends more on the in groupness of the user. In short, Korean honorifics and Japanese honorifics um, have similar meaning and form, but the yearly distribution is different. Therefore, both people of uh, of different cultures might experience difficulty assimilating and adjusting their usage of honorifics if they do not take into consideration the different yearly distributions. We will move on to the second part of the assignment, which is cultural identity versus cultural diversity. Narshikin and I, Ninor Afifa, will be presenting this part. For the first point, we will focus on the rules of language in accentuating the legitimacy of a culture. According to Oxford Dictionary, language is a system of sounds and words used by humans to communicate, while culture includes beliefs, arts, skills, laws, behaviors that an individual shared as a member of a society. So we can see that both have similarity, language and culture in terms of these two are shared by a group of people. It is important for a culture to have a system of communication because they need to convey the message and express themselves to make sure that their culture will survive even when their generation no longer exists. This can be seen that the language helps them to transfer the culture to the next generation before, before the culture dissolves from this world. For example, language helps the Yanomamo of the Venezuelan rainforest to prohibit the usage of the name of their disease relatives and important people in the presence of their living kinfolk. This is considered as an insult and this custom is known as the name taboo. Another example uh, that is closer to most of us, which is in Malay culture, we have seniority title uh, where we call Machi, which is translated to auntie, or Abang, which is translated to brother, to address those who are older to us, who are older than us, to convey respect to them. We also use this to address strangers. Language is also able to accentuate a culture's belief and historical patches through the grammar and vocabulary system of the language itself. This can be seen in certain languages that have gender bias in them, like Arabic, English, and French. Gender language uh, refers to 
language that has grammatical genders such as natural, feminine, and masculine. This usually leads to historical effects that can be seen throughout the history where instead of using businessmen and businesswomen to address each gender, we usually heard of businessmen and not businesswomen. The last point is based on the Sapir Wolf his hypothesis, which it says that if a language can affect one's thoughts, but culture also shapes one's worldview. The choice of words they choose to use to express their perspective is actually related to their thoughts and their point of view towards the world. Usually, those who are in the same group of a culture can fully understand the true meaning of certain word choice because they share the same values and beliefs. The outsiders who learn the language but do not belong in the culture usually misuse the language and this can lead to the offense of the to offending the people in their culture. It can be seen that it is important to learn both language and culture to avoid misunderstanding and miscommunication. For example, here we can see that father in English, as we know, it refers to parent figure of a child. Of a child. While in Seminole Indian, Father actually refers to the father's brother. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and, uh, and very good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Nur Azatin Binti Azan and I will be presenting on the problems, issues, dilemmas when a culture encounters a different culture. So um, I have three points here which are misinterpretations and loss in translation. Uh, the second one is interception interceptions in the connection between two cultures and also risk of having the cultural identity being forgotten or overpowered. So, uh, for the first um, point, means interpretations and loss in translation. Um, how can this happen? Uh, it, is, it is found that um, pragmalinguistic pra differences at discourse level of speech to social pragmatic differences which will be an utterances between two languages are different. So we can never fully translate one language to another because um, the language itself has its essence. So when it is used, when it is um, uh, presented into another language, it, its essence has reduced uh, from the original meaning. So, um, the examples of misinterpretations and loss in translation can be clearly seen in two conditions, even though I would say a lot of situation can uh, display this matter, but uh, I only chose uh, when in courts and also in medical field. For in courts, imagine if a defendant or a plaintiff or even a witness uh, is trying to tell uh, a story but she is um, speaking in another language that the court is not using so she needs a tr uh, interpreter to interpret or a translator to, uh, to translate what is sh what she is saying to the judge to the jury and also to the audiences uh, however, uh, misinterpretations and loss in translation can happen because if the interpreter or the translator did not get the real essence or the real intention of the speaker uh, bec because of differences in language. So, um, it can be said that this matter of translating and interpreting is a very dangerous and tricky Act because instead of revealing the speaker's true intention, uh, the interpreter or the translator can actually conceal the true meaning. Uh, for example, in medical situation, in 
in the hospital. Um, a, a patient who can't speak the language the doctor is speaking needs a translator. And then the translator translates whatever the speaker is saying to the doctor. But with misinterpretation or mistranslation, um, the transition can hide the real problem that the patient is having or facing. And this can actually lead to uh, this, this can actually lead to othering minority patients because uh, they, do, they cannot speak a certain language. So uh, they are actually abandoned or not being prioritized in uh, medical cases. And this would, le this would lead to a more dangerous um, consequences such as uh, giving or receiving the wrong treatment. So uh, in both situations, in courts and also in uh, medicals, medical emergencies, we can see that it, uh, a misinterpre misinterpretations and loss in transition can actually affect someone's lives. So uh, it's not a petty uh, problem if I would like to highlight. So the second one. The second point is the interception in the connection between two cultures. This can be visualized by the concept of time. People see time differently in different parts of the world. Uh, some of them, uh, there are three ways of how people perceive time, which are linear, cyclic, and also mortal active. Uh, usually the Western see time, the Western see time as linear. So I would like to give Americans as an example. Because Americans see time as linear. Uh, they see time as past, uh, consisting of past, present, and also future. Um, and we can see that Americans actually uh, view time as expensive. This is proved by uh, their own idiom, time is money. And time is associated with work that is also associated with money, such as spending, Wasting and also saving. In contrast, for the Italians and the Spaniards, they see time as mortal active, which means that the uh, they value uh, human transaction more than the time is passing. Uh, simply, simply put, as long as the uh, work is done, time is not the problem. Um, and this actually has created a tension between the Americans and also the Italians when they. Uh, they, they, they meet each other because um, they see time differently. Uh, one, for the Americans, you cannot sit and do nothing because time is expensive. But for the Italians, as long as it helps you in doing something or it has value, even though you, do, you, you are doing nothing, it's fine. And uh, for the Swiss and the Germans, um, they value punctuality the most. Therefore, they can also um, have problem with Italians and the Spaniards because they have different ways in seeing time. The reason why I put the picture of uh, this clock is because to as uh, to give an analogy as how we have different time zones in the in different parts of the world. We can also have different ways of seeing time, uh, and this has. This will intercept the connection between the two cultures. Last but not least, when a society or community collides with another, one of the both cultures is usually at risk uh, of having the, its cultural identity being forgotten or overpowered. Uh, there is always like this uh, possibility of one of the culture to be to assimilated to uh, the other culture and. Uh, one of the example that how this can happen is through through the assimilation of the custom into pop cultures. Um, you we can see that pop culture pop culture is enjoyed by all walks of life. So there is a possibility that the culture can be misappropriated rather than appreciated by uh, irresponsible people. Um, and this can happen in a lot of fields such as fashion film, sports, and also music. So I would like to, the example is uh, from uh, this one. There is a famous celebrity named Kim Kardashian. She actually 
um, released a shapewear line, um, which she named as Kimono, as uh, it it rhymes. Yeah, it is a pun to her name, Kim. But when someone heard Kimono, we are always reminded to the the to the Japanese attire that is really delicate and beautiful. But uh, in contrast to this, to this case. Kimono by Kim Kardashian is not even Japanese theme. It's just a shapewear for women. So this has created uh, anguish among a lot of people, especially the Japanese themselves. Uh, the Japanese themselves, because uh, this has actually misappropriate. Uh, Kim Kardashian actually has misappropriated the culture of uh, Japanese, which actually has centuries long rich history and the name kimono is deeply embedded in the traditions and the culture of the of the japanese and the country japan itself so um this is how uh this is what cultural misappropriation uh shows us because um one is using a culture symbol or attire or food to uh, for her own benefit but she doesn't really learn or know the history of why the custom is being practiced in a certain culture uh, after that kim kardashian changes her uh, kim kardashian changed the sh- the shapewear line name to skims because uh, the mayor of kyoto which is the city of kimono actually personally reached out to her and say that you need to change this because this isn't right so this is a very uh, clear example of how um the cultural identity can be forgotten or overpowered when it is assimilated into the custom uh, uh it is assimilated into pop culture so uh to conclude uh there is three points there is three uh, problems that we actually detected when one culture collides uh, with another culture, which are first misinterpretations or loss in translation. Uh, the second one is um, the interception uh, in connection between the two cultures, and the last one is the risk of having the one cultural identity being forgotten or overpowered. The next part is about suggesting realistic approaches for a community to embrace cultural diversity while simultaneously safeguard its cultural roots. Uh, there are three uh, ways that this, uh, we have three suggestions on this, which are keen usage of mother tongue, tourism, and also entertainment. But I will only uh, explain on the first one. And after this, I think I would take the stage. Uh, for the first point is the keen usage of mother tongue. Uh, we always uh, use our mother tongue as a medium of communi- communication. And this, from this way, this can encourage one to be proud of their own culture instead of trying to adopt pop culture, which is actually risky of having it to be misappropriated or like, like what I, I mentioned earlier. Um, a very good example of this is when we actually see uh, ja- the Japanese and also the Chinese because when we go to their country, there is no such thing as speaking uh, English with them. They usually, speaks, they, they usually speak Japanese or Chinese and this has actually encouraged tourists to learn their, their language uh, and at the same time actually preserve their language from being uh, overpowered or oppressed. And then um, they, since they refuse to talk in other languages other than theirs, so people will, t- will speak in their language. Um, uh, how in Japan this happens because Japanese people are taught from toddlers that 
they are Japanese and this is an integral part of them which is speaking speaking in Japanese if you do not speak Japanese then you're not a Japanese um, and this has actually protect uh, their pride and identity and uh, when this uh, and regarding to the toddlers when they go to school they will actually meet uh, other Japanese friends because uh, as we know Jap Japan is a homogeneous country there is only one this in, in Japan so everyone is Japanese so everyone is speaking in Japanese so there is no need of other languages other than Japan to communicate so uh, this has actually helped them to preserve their language and their own mother tongue uh, and when someone is speaking in other language, it seems weird and unnatural for them. So, such an attitude actually has facilitated them in protecting their cultural language until now. Tourism is often used as a means to introduce and spread the culture globally. This activity can actually help the country financially, but at the same time, they can help the culture to be preserved and strengthen the identity of the people. People from all around the world can come to the place and learn the culture through first-hand experience. This direct involvement and interaction with local people will avoid any miscommunication and false information about a culture. The example given is tourism in Palembang, which in a particular place in Palembang, there is a place that Arabic, Chinese and Malay live together. As you can imagine that the place is full of culture and people come from all around the world to visit the place. However, the tourism activity can actually disrupt their daily work so in order to make this successful the government must collaborate with the local people to make sure that both government and local people get the benefit this is important because the the local people living in that particular place in particular place in palembang actually have low income so they cannot afford being miss being at work. Thus, the government must collaborate with the local people who live in that area. area. So, uh, and this is actually very beneficial to the government too because they cannot handle the activity alone without the help from the local people because the local people know the culture best. In, ad in addition, the purpose of cultural heritage tourism is to preserve the culture and spread the knowledge uh, of the culture to other parts of the world. So it can be preserved um, strongly and stronger to make sure that the culture lives for a long time. And they also need to make sure that the culture is not being altered by outsiders. The last approach is the most famous one, which is true entertainment, because it can easily reach to other parts of the world. For example, writings and films, uh, people often publish books about their culture and this makes it as this makes it accessible to people around the world especially when they can purchase the book uh, through online website and they can have ebook instead of physical book the same goes to films where it becoming more common now to produce films and cult about culture around the world uh, and it can clearly portrays the beauty of a culture through the big screen. The last one is translation of a book can also be one of the approaches to preserve a culture. For example, um, for example, 
the translation of the ghost short stories, which is the runes and other stories by Muhammad Abdul Qayyum. Uh, perfectly conveys the message from Tagore. We can clearly understand uh, the social issue uh, depicted by Tagore, uh, by Tagore through the translation without uh, without any alter. Although it is best to learn a culture based on their original language, uh, it is still a good medium for people who are newly introduced to uh, to the culture hi i am ayn shakira and for the last part of this presentation we will provide a brief explanation in our second assignment we have chosen 12 short essay samples from a 12 years old boy he is a malay therefore his first language is malay language and he started acquiring um, his second language which is english at the age of five the reason we chose this participant is because we want to study whether there is a pattern of errors made by the participant in his eighth year of learning the second language formally at school. Um, the results and discussion will be provided in the written assignment later. Uh, thank you all for listening. Um, have a nice day and Assalamualaikum.